Okay, so the next little project is something I've been asked again for, and it's something I've wanted to work on for a little while now. It's a little keepsake box, essentially. I'm gonna make a trial one first, and I'm gonna do it out of pine. Um, I've got a bit of that sitting around at the minute. If that all works out well, and I'm happy with it, then I will make that into something else. I've got a couple of box things that I bought from a company that I use to get a lot of my hardwoods from. Um, so I'm gonna get my table saw set up now, get everything all measured, and let's get cutting. Right, so we're set up now. I've got a board marked out where I'm gonna cut it. I've not really worked out any measurements apart from making sure the main parts are all gonna be the same size, so it's in the length of the box and the depth of the box from the front to the back. Just make sure they're, they're even. Obviously once I've cut them, I'll make sure our final lengths are even just by running back over the uh, table saw just to smooth off the edges. Make sure they're 100% completely smooth, um, completely square even, should I say. Once I've done that, then I'll, work, I'll move on to the next step. I will talk you through that then. Right, let's get cutting. <laughs> So that's that step done. Got them all lovely and level, so I'm happy with that. Next step is now is to work on a joint. So I'm gonna play with a joint that I have not actually done before. I've seen you guys on YouTube do it loads of times, and as I want to move my woodworking capabilities forward, I need to obviously work on new techniques. This is gonna be one of them. Should be pretty straightforward from what I've seen and how I understand it to be done. Um, the only difference is I'm doing it with obviously a single blade, should I ideally do it with a dado blade, a dado stack, but got to work with what you got. So I'm basically just going to do it, so the joints are just inside, so I think it's a box joint, I think is what it's called, and we'll go with that. So it'll be obviously inside, but it'll be overlapping. Let's crack on, I'll show you a bit more once the cut's done as to what sort of style it is. What I'll do first, I'll try the joint with a couple of pieces of scrap wood that I've got. Hence why I keep a lot of scrap wood. It comes in handy for these bits and pieces like these, so you don't go ahead straight into cutting whatever joints you want or doing whatever you want, make a mistake and then ruining the whole project. Better off trying with a little sample piece first, and if it works out good, then move on to the next thing. Hence why I'm building this whole box out of pine first to see what it looks like. So I'm going to work out where I want to cut and then set the blade up from there. So I've got that roughed up on there. It's going to set up the fence now and then work away from there. However, you missed the steps from what I was doing to get the box part together, but you guys will know already what I'm doing, you experienced guys anyway. I'm basically taking this part off all the way along here and then joining the box together that way. So I've already done the long parts, the sides, and it all fits together quite nicely. Once it's all sanded down, there is a slight cup in this board, but once it's all glued up and clamped, it goes away, well once it's clamped it goes away, obviously once it's glued up, it'll be absolutely fine. So the next step <clears throat> is to do the same for the top and bottom of the box. So that's what these parts are gonna be. So I am making basically a completely solid box. I'm gonna glue it all together, get it all set up, <clears throat> and then after it's done and all glued and it's dried, what I'll then do, I'll come back to my table saw and then I'll cut right away along the box, all the way around to separate, basically to make a top and the bottom part. That's the way I've seen a lot of boxes made. I've seen a lot of different style of boxes made. I quite like that way. It's quite a simple way of doing it. So I thought I'd give it a try. Let's carry on. Next job is to cut all this off. So let's crack on.
So they do need cleaning up a little bit. They're a little bit rough, but it's not as easy to do when you run it that way. But that's what it's going to sit like. Obviously, it'll all be snug. So it'll look like it's all one piece. So I'm going to put you back up on the shelf. And I'm going to run these bits over just one more time just to clear these little bits up. Okay, so we have all the bits cut now. I have the top and bottom cut. The side pieces. I should say the end pieces. And then essentially the front and back panel. So, like I said, all I'm going to do with this lot is just glue it all together. Clamp the heck out of it. I've got all my clamps ready to go right there. And then just leave it to sit. Once it's done, I'll then get my table saw back out. And like I say, I'll, I'll measure that and then I'll cut through. So let's start gluing it up. It may look a bit overkill with all the clamps and stuff, but I want it to stay together for a long time. Even though it is only the practice one, I want it to last. So I'm clamping the snot out of it. I'm gonna leave this to dry, and then I'll get onto that. That'll be tomorrow for me now, or a few seconds for you. So I'll catch you then. So I've had a look over it after I've taken out the clamps and there are some little gaps that have got on it. As you know, this one is only a test, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna fill the gaps with some glue and then just give the whole box of sand over because that glue then will mix with the sawdust and essentially create its own filler. I have done the same thing before if you watch one of my other videos, but I, pr I mixed it out of it. So I've, I've taken some sawdust mix it with some glue, make essentially a paste, and then you can fill it in from that way. There's another way, if you've got bigger gaps, that's a way that I would tend to go with it. With the gaps that are on this, I don't need to do that, they're not that big. So, that's what it looks like off the bat. So, the next step now is I'm gonna measure to where I wanna cut it, and then I'm gonna set my table saw up and I'm gonna run it through my table saw, set the fence up so I can run a table through the table saw, and then I'm gonna basically just flip it over and get it cut all the way through. After that, I will then put some inserts in there so the box all lines back up again and it's all good. But let's get the table saw set up and go for there. Catch you in a minute. Right, so we're now set up with a table saw. I've got the blades set to a depth that it will just go just through the timber and then I see it won't I've not gone stupid and raised the blade as high as it can go just there's no need for it so let's get cutting pieces so the next step is I'm gonna go over these joints all these edges here should I say not joints all these edges and just give them a little bit of a smooth over They're actually not too bad and a bit of a tidy up on here as well so I'll probably go through some of bits and pieces like these these are obviously not long enough a couple of them might be alright for the side but I'll go through those pieces so I can find something that will sit just on the inside here, just to help locate the lid when it goes back on. I'm not going to hinge it. I did contemplate on that, but I don't think I will. I do have some small hinges, so I could do But I'm not sure. Let me ponder on that while I get everything else sorted. Do I want to use walnut with pine? 
Do I just rip down something else? Because I am going to make another one. I've decided on that now. Out of potentially the wild mango that I've got over there. And then I have a couple of pieces of things here. Purple heart and an oak. So do I save the nicer wood for those? Because I am going to make another one out. One, either this or the wild mango. Or a combination of both. These pieces that I've got here. I've got a nice lump of sapile as well. It's a good size. And then I've got this piece of wild mango. Which has got some lovely pattern into it. Lovely grain. I got these from a place I get quite a few pieces of timber from actually. Uh, Surrey Timbers. Obviously based down in Surrey, UK. Very, very reasonable prices. Very good bunch of people to deal with. When I got these, I actually went past the warehouse to collect some bits and pieces and have a look at what they had there. You can go there, have a little wander around, find some bits and pieces, find them online, give them a call, whatever way you want to do it. But they are a good bunch of people to deal with. For most of my boards, that's where I got some stuff from. Yeah, from a few different bits and pieces, really. And again, all this, all these pieces were from the uh, project packs that they have, and they also have little packs for UK hardwoods as well as exotic hardwoods. So yeah, give them a shout. Tell them that you heard it for real. Give them a try. You won't be sorry. could cut this pine down I think I'll do that actually I think I'll rip that down on the bandsaw and make my nice little uh, bits in there to help locate the top bear with me while I have a little fiddle around with that I'll get back to you shortly what I've then got ahead and done on the bandsaw I've got some pine super one that I had and I've just cut that into thin strips which is what I've then put on the inside to help locate the lid on there nicely. So this is on there nice. I was contemplating on putting a couple of hinges on here. Now I may still do that, but I'm not. I'm not either way on that one at the moment. I'm not. I'm not sure. I like the way it is and the way it comes off. Now I've put a little handle on top here. Again, it's just another small piece of pine. Started off like this, and then all I've done. Is I've shaped it on the bandsaw easy enough done that and then I've put I've run it again from the bandsaw some more little pieces of pine and I'm going to use them as feet basically to go basically So they will sit underneath there like that. Whether I bring them right to the corners, I'm not sure. Whether I leave them sitting in, again, not sure either way at the moment. But that is, at the moment, where I am with the box. I quite like the way it's turned out. I initially, when I started cutting all the pieces and gluing it together, I was initially gonna do the box that way. So then I was gonna cut it around this way and make that the top. When I looked at it again, after I took it out of clamps, I thought that looked stupid. It was gonna to be too deep and not very, it was gonna to be too deep in, like from top to bottom, but front to back wasn't gonna be very deep that way. I then laid the box on its side just to have a little uh, ponder as to what I was gonna do. And it just came straight to me. It was probably obvious, probably obvious to most of you guys, but why I was in my little world, my little bubble down here in the workshop, it weren't so obvious. But that's how it's turning out. I'm really liking the way it is, the way the grain's all running through it as well is pretty decent. For the first one that I've done, I'm quite chuffed with. So the next steps from here are to go ahead and fill all the gaps. There's only a little gap down here and up this end, 
nothing major. But I'm just going to dab some glue into those, give the whole thing a sand over. And there you go. That's filled those little holes in, the little gaps in on that side. Let me give you another one so you can actually see. So you look down here, there's a bit of a gap here at the moment. It's not much, there is some glue in there. It just, obviously I didn't get the clamps on it tight enough to pull that bit together. There's another one this side. So I'm gonna do exactly the same again. Down too bad, so it just needs more. So it clearly will work on slightly bigger gaps, but you just may have to do it a couple of times. I'm sure there's a few of you out there that have done this sort of thing a heck load more than I have. So if there's any hints, little tips, tricks, whatever you can pass on, whether that to be me or the people in the comments. Yeah. Hopefully one of you lot will start commenting soon or later. So, I don't know if you can see that now. Still sort of noticeable where the filler's been. But that is the back of the box as well. And I'm not sure whether it's gonna be filled at the moment. Not filled, should I say? Whether it's gonna be stained or whether it's just gonna be painted. I'm undecided on that. Again, it may be something I leave. And if anyone wants the box, then obviously they can decide on what, what happens with it, color-wise. But for the time being, a bit more sanding, a bit more finishing it up a little bit so the gap that's between here I don't know if I said already it wasn't completely perfect because of where the saw blade was so what I've done I couldn't get it much tighter so what I've done I've actually used a bit of sandpaper and just softened the edges of it and just accentuated it to show that there is a break so it doesn't look like it's a that I bugged it up it looks like it actually has been done on purpose and I like the way it looks, so I'm happy with that. If you guys don't, can't help you with that, sorry. Now I'm happy with how that looks, how it's turning out. So, whether I leave it in or not, you might have seen I broke the angle. So I need to redo one of them. But, I might, Do it out of a bit of oak instead. Obviously there's a much harder wood, oak over pine. But I've got a bit of two by two here. So I could put a bit more of a substantial handle on it. Gonna cut one up anyway, and then we'll see where we go from there. Now this is gonna be one of them things that I have no idea how it's gonna turn out. I'm just winging it, see what it looks like. Bear with me. In some sort of shape all that will be rounded over I'm not gonna leave it blocky like that but I'm looking more for the sides of it wherever I take more of an angle off on this side get more of a pitch let me give it a round over and see what it looks like 
Yeah, and I need to clean up the bin. Now, that's what it looks like. Now it's all been softened. Ever so slightly anyway. Does need a bit more work doing to it. I'm not mad at it, but I'm not. Maybe I need to round it off more. Let me fit it on the box and then we'll see what it looks like. Not too mad with that. Because the box is quite chunky itself. Doesn't look too daft. But, I've still got this piece left of oak, plus plenty of others, but I've got this little piece that I can use still. Do I try something else? I think the answer is yes. But I'll get back to you on that one. Right, so I had a play about with some different styles and I used the other piece of oak that I had and like I say, play about with it. Got a couple of different shapes, not happy with it. Cut it down a little bit more and that's what I ended up with. And it's not a bad little thing, but it still looked too chunky for the lid. So then I went back to the original handle and then I modified that. So then what I've done, that's what I've done with it. I've turned it almost into a diamond. Now I'm happy with that size because the box is a fair size itself. So the handle really truly needs to be decent size in itself. I don't want it too big, too, too in your face, but I wanted it to be able to just get hold of lift off you can get your hand around that nicely and obviously because it's oak it's not gonna wear the same way as if it was a bit of pine obviously pine would soften down with age and potentially break you know or pull off if it's only glued on so the next step now is to get the feet glued on and then decide whether it's going to be painted or stained let me know in the comments what you guys would do would you paint it? Would you stain it? Would you do anything different with it? What I am going to do first before I do anything else is I want to take down these edges a little bit, just break the edges slightly. I'm just going to do that by hand. But I will. Okay, I'm so the top bone fall off. Gotta decide what I'm gonna do with the feet. As in, am I gonna just play some get that stuff? Am I just gonna play some right to the corners? Or am I gonna step them in a little bit? I think I'm liking the way it looks with them stepped in slightly, so just want to work out how much just so I can keep them that way all the way around. So I've got to clamp the feet on and they turn the clamp against. So let's get them done. I am going to step them in ever so slightly from the sides. And I was contemplating on nailing them on, but I think that's just a bit, a bit much. And the other thing, would you guys put a liner in this or would you just leave it as is, bare wood inside? 
again, this obviously by the time the video is out, everything will be done. But I'm curious as to what you guys would do. So whether you would do a liner or not. So when I say a liner, whether it don't have to be wood, whether it be like a fabric, you know, that nice velvety sort of stuff to put inside. I've contemplated on that. I might go that route. We'll see. Well, you'll see soon. I've still got to decide it. Now the one thing to bear in mind, obviously, when you are clamping on like this, is you don't want to go too mad. Obviously, you want the feet to stay on there, but you don't want to end up denting the top. Especially if you're using softwood like pine, it dents very easily. Obviously the sander will clean it up again, hence why you've got to do things in certain stages, just because if it does dent, you've still got a little bit of room to sand it out before you get to the stages of any finish or anything else. But for now, let's let that dry. I'll have a little bit of a clean up, and I'll get back to you shortly. Right, as you can see, this is the stage we're at now with the box. The feet are on there. I did leave them in just a little bit from the edges. It just gives it a bit of a different profile. That's the box itself. And the handle's on there. I like the way the handle looks. It comes off nicely, but locates nicely with those inner pieces. So the next step now is to give it a hoover off, get rid of all the dust off it, or as much of the dust as I can. And then I'm gonna put a stain on it, I've decided. I'm gonna go for a dark oak stain, just because I've got the oak handle on there. And I think it might be nice to darken this up just to complement it slightly. So let's get hoovering. That's had a good clean up now, so that's all good. I have ordered some liner for it, because I am going to put a nice little felt liner in there. Chose to go with just like a black, dark greyish or black colour, just because it's probably the most neutral. If a customer wanted it any sort of colour, then obviously I'd opt for that. I'd go with that route. Yeah, so that's it for now. We're going to take the handle off flip it all over and then now I'm just going to go ahead and give it a stain and uh, give it some time to dry and see where we go from there. The liner is coming today so depending on what time that gets it that will go in here as well. Either way you guys will see it. With the handle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a coat of my wood wax. Just help bring the grain and stuff out in there as well, bring the colours out. And then my thoughts are to give the whole box, after it's been stained and got it to the colour that I'm happy with, give the whole box a coat in like a polyurethane seal or something. Just to make it a bit more resistant, a bit more hard wearing. Or maybe a hard wax finish, something along them lines. Again. If you guys out there who are way more experienced than I am at this sort of stuff, teach us something. What's better? What would you choose to go for? Would you go for a hard wax sealer to put on top of it, make it more resilient? Or would you go for a polyurethane spray, paint on, whatever it may be? What would be your choice? You know? Don't forget this is only a pine box, so it is what it is. But with this, whether it's with this, whether it's with something with the nicer woods, whether it be a walnut or the wild mango that I'm going to do another one out of another time. What would you go for? Let us know. Teach us something. Come on, not just me. Also, what colour would you guys paint this? Obviously I'm going for a stain. Would you go for a stain? If so, what colour? If you paint it, again, what colour? Would you do a hard oak or hard wood handle like I've done? Would you do something else? Would you just make it all completely out of pine? Okay. Let's talk. Share some ideas. I'm saying in a lot of my videos, you know, if there's anything out there you guys 
would like me to build, or would like to see me build, no matter what it is. Again, like I say, always bear in mind it is only a small workshop. You see my working space. But give me a shout, let me know. If it's not too crazy, or even if it is crazy, I'll probably give it a go. Probably would have been better to do all this while it was still in pieces, but as I like to get my pieces all glued on first, there's a chance of anything having a reaction against your glue. Right, okay, we are a lot further along now with this box. That's the main body of it. As you see, it's got the feet on, and it's got the stain that I've on it now as well, which was a light oak stain. I've since then decided to put a coat of polyurethane on it, which is what's given it a nice shine. You sort of see there on the light. Feels really good as well. I've given that a little bit of time to fully cure, so that's really nice and hardened. So there's the lid as well. There's the handle on it. it looks really good. So that's a oak, a natural oak product on top, and then obviously the light oak stain on the lid with the polyurethane on it. I left the handle completely plain. Just think it looks a bit nicer, in my opinion. So what I've done is I taped off the inside of the lid because what I didn't account for, so you guys, a little bit of a heads up, is the swelling of the wood when I put the stain and stuff on it, or even the polyurethane any sort of product you put on it really. It just adds that little bit back. So I was trying to keep the lid really nice and tight. I'm not gonna put it back on because the polyurethane around here is still tacky. But <clears throat> I didn't account for that. I kept on thinking, I wanna make it nice and tight because it will loosen with age. You know, it will soften. If the more and more the lid's taken off, it will loosen slightly. So I was trying to account for that rather than account for the stain or, a, or any sealer. Um, so I've had a little play about with that. So that's why I didn't want to put the polyurethane on the inside of the lid, just because I didn't want it to be any tighter than what it is now. So it's a really nice tight fit. Snug fit even, should I say. Since then, I've been on everyone's favorite delivery uh, company, and I ordered up a pack of this black liner. Now I'm gonna use that to line the bottom of the box, the inside of the lid, and also around the sides of the box as well. Just to give it a nicer, tidier looking finish, I think. So I'm letting that dry a bit more. I might put it down in front of the heater actually, just to uh, let it flash off a bit better and get on with lining the box. Let's do that. So I have trimmed these pieces just because I didn't, I made the box obviously a fair size for what it is. And I didn't account for these being longer. These are an A4 size sheet. The box is a little bit longer than that. <coughs> so there will be a join in there. So what I'm gonna do to try and hide that join the best I can is my plan is to put one piece on the bottom and then add another piece next to it that will obviously bring it all level and then go back the opposite way with another piece doing the same thing putting that on top and another piece at the end it will make it a little bit thicker so maybe make it feel a bit nicer but what I'm hoping it will do is hide that joint that's the plan anyway you may see this over here but because it's gonna have this underneath it I'm hoping that once the white backing is taken off that disappears as well so you shouldn't see anything that is the plan so that's the next step. I've got these as I say already cut. So I just wanna go ahead and stick them in. Or well, try to stick them in, if I can get the backing off. bit done. Now on camera, that actually looks pretty decent. 
in person, it doesn't look bad. I'm not keen with the join there, but that is the idea, or that is the reason why I had the idea of doubling it up. So, let's go ahead and do that now. I hope in the long run, to be able to get another camera together and maybe rig it up above the table so you can actually see what's going on down here. But, as needs must. At the moment, fans are not there for it. If you guys keep liking and subscribing, sharing, one day we might be able to do it. I actually like how it feels double layered as well, it just adds a little bit extra flushness to it. So we're good with that. Right, that is the base of the box done. Let's get a bit of light on there, don't I? I'll take some pictures of it and I'll add it up as well, just from that stage. So that's the base, all done. I'm proper happy with that as well. I really like the way that it turned out. All right, let's get under the top. Still a little bit tacky, but I'm all right with that. We can work with it. Now I'm gonna do the top exactly the same way. Just double line it. Just think it turns out much, much nicer. Why is somebody so blooming hard? So the inside of the box I had to do a different way, but this I'm gonna do just by marking it, putting a nice rough edge on it here. Hopefully that will transfer to the other side. Alright, hopefully you can see that better. That's how it's laid out. You can still see a little seam here, but it doesn't draw your eye to it. It's only there, as you guys know it's there, and I know it's there, we can see it. So that's the inside of that done. Let's try the lid. And that's it as a finished box. I am properly chuffed with that. Considering it's my first box I've ever done, I am happy, I'm properly happy with that. I don't want to leave it on too long because that's, that's still tacky. No, my luck, it will stick to the blooming thing and that will be it done. I've just realised I've forgotten something. Such a blooming one. I've got to do these parts. I'll catch you back in a bit though. Right. Start cutting down this stuff for the sides. Get that sorted out. It's only going to be rough cut to start off with and then I'll probably end up trimming out with the scissors I'm just going to get it near to the size. Did you see what I'm doing? Let's have fun with the back end again.
Right. And there is my finished box. That's it lined, and it actually is finished now. It's lined all the way up. Whereas before, when it was finished, I didn't line it up here. Now it's finished, finished. And I am, I don't know if you can notice it coming up the sides. Yeah, you can. For a first timer, like I've already said, I am quite chuffed with it. Now, as with most things on this channel, like you know, it all just comes out me one way or another. Yeah. I start off with an idea, and then it progresses into something completely different. Like the uh, handle, as you see, I started off with one idea, moved to something completely different, then went back to the first one, and then modified it. So, I bounce around a little bit sometimes like that, which is what makes my projects unique, I like to think. But yeah, that's it done, all finished. Yeah. Whether it is going to be for a relative's memories or whether I pass it on to someone else to use for theirs, I'm not certain on that as of yet. Yeah, for now, that's it. Happy days. See you on the next one.